Now time to go to our Bobby Jones instructional piece. A real privilege to be able to bring these to you as we move along the Gothing Trail. How to play the game by one of the greatest who ever did it. The left arm must be straight at impact. It is possible to straighten it during the downswing, but the more certain and therefore more consistent method is to keep it reasonably straight from the start. The best way to assure a full extension of the left arm is to use it in pushing the club back, not independently of the body turn, but assisted by the movement of the entire left side. The movement of the right arm during the first part of the backswing indicates quite clearly that it is taking little part in the action. But then after swinging round, it begins to help in lifting the club over the shoulder. The elbow is drawn away from the side of the body, but it remains below the club and never appears likely to begin flapping like the wing of a frightened bird. Bobby Jones, and interesting to see the lithe uh, movement in the swing, the rhythm, and although the old left hand looked a little bit loose at the top of the back swing, <laughs> it, uh, his record shows that it certainly worked for him. Those pictures from 1931. More than half a century ago, a big part of the story so far was the drop gotten by Tom Kite on the first hole. He had put his second shot in the left rough behind him there. It was casual water, however, and going to the nearest point of relief he was able to drop it in the fairway perfectly legitimate Frank Hannigan right uh, within the rules of golf absolutely am I correct that the rules don't really recognize the difference between the rough and the, the fairway it's just through the green right? Ozaki for a bogey remember he put his ball in the water here So it'll be a double bogey six for Ozaki, which will drop him to even par for the championship. And one over on today's round. That's tough. All caused, you see, by missing the fairway, finding a, a heavy lie in the rough and not being able to make your target in two. So you can say drive for show and putt for dough all you want, but get that tee shot in the middle. Huh? That's right. There is some truth in that, but not total. J. Don Blake needing this for the double bogey six two over par on this hole well done that's what we're told that there was a double bogey so that would drop him to one over for the championship two over for the day the fourth hole yeah this is uh, 570 it's not often you get par fives these days that the mighty hitters can't reach in two. Usually they humble them with drives and three irons. But these are real par fives here at Oak Hill. You can see the bend in the fairway and the big bunker up by the green. Double trouble. Here's how it's played this week in this championship. Second easiest hole in the golf course. Six was, has been the easiest with four holes in one, as you yeah. think so. More birdies, as you see, than bogeys here. Pin placement today. It's nice to see th three shotters, though, par fives. I mean, it's, uh, otherwise we'll end up having golf courses 9,000 yards long in years to come. Uh, this is a true par five. You won't get home here in two. M m very unlikely, at any rate. Scott's 135 yards. Hit kind of a weak drive, but he laid up, both players, in fact, laid up with irons with their second shots. Got the right-hand bunker to contend with, but it shouldn't give him any problem. Sorry, sir. It won't come on back. So a good shot. Yep. Tom Kite is about 115 yards. 
First, a look, uh, Rossi, at Larry Nelson here on the fifth hole. That's a six iron from 160. Right at the flag. Oh, I should say it was right at it. Now, now, Rossi, let's go back to Tom Kite. He's one of the best from this distance. bounce would have helped up the golf course to the fifth fairway and Curtis Strange now four strokes behind Curtis with a seven iron from 153 playing into the wind slightly right to left much wind out there starting to pick up Jim that ball is hanging out to the right needs to draw in some it's a good shot though safe yeah. shot there's a lot of trouble left to the flag here you can see the flag moving with the wind there. It's beginning to pick up. So there we are, and time now to hand you over to the man who guides you all along ABC's golfing trail through the year, our colleague Jack Whitaker. Thank you very much, Jim and Peter. David, um, the last round of the U.S. Open, like any major tournament, is exciting. It really gets exciting on the back nine, but unless these fellows start getting a little more in touch with Tom Kite, Maybe a nice walk home for him. Well, I think it was Ricey that said in the opening of the show, they're going to have to come get him because he's a very, very cool customer and with the best chance he's ever had to win one of the 18 Opens that he's played in. Trying to figure out, now, why are these guys in front? When you look at Scott Simpson, Curtis Strange, Larry Nelson, Tom Kite, Jack, I think it's because they're more swingers and sweepers when the conditions this week all being wet. In other words, hitters who take more uh, speed through the ball, take maybe a bigger divot, are not as uh, apt to control the, the ball as much. And I think these guys have an advantage under wet conditions. 60 and Osaki. Comes from a great golfing family in Japan, David. They're like the Ternisa brothers used to be here in the United States. Three of them play, and they all make a lot of money. Jumbo and Jet, he won 11 million yen last year. I don't know what that computes to. Well, that's a six iron from 175 yards, and it's started left. Osaki coming back from a double bogey in the last hole has to gather himself together and get back in touch. Scott Simpson at four for birdie. speed there for the 87 Open champion and this year won the Atlanta tournament. Son of a very good senior golfer, amateur senior. He's won a lot in Japan, as a matter of fact. He's played over there uh, for a number of years and won three or four tournaments in Japan. While we wait for the leader, let's see Larry Nelson's attempt for a birdie at five. From about 20 feet, slightly uphill, left to right breaker. Never was close. Jerry just started it right, right away. Raymond Floyd at the 18th. Finishing up. Started a few 18 holes in his time. Captain of this year's Ryder Cup, and there's a lot of excitement over here with our guys about making the team and going over to see Peter's guys. Nick, Nicholas for birdie at 16. Hello. Great start, 67 the first day, and then just uh, two sort of indifferent rounds there on Friday and Saturday.
Now back at four, the leader for another birdie. At the fifth, Curtis Strange for birdie. From about 15 feet, downhill left to right breaker. Curtis really needs to make one at this point to get something going. This, this one's really slick, though. He's yeah, just one you've got to just guard against being too aggressive. Perfect speed. Oh. Just didn't turn. He hit a perfect putt. Well, he's, he's talking to it, too, Jerry. Now, as we look down on this final day of the United States Open Championship for 1989, Tom Kite tapping in for a par at the fourth hole has a three-shot lead over Scott Simpson. Rochester's greatest golfer was the flamboyant Walter Hagen, who was working as a 20-year-old club pro when he surprised everyone except himself by winning the United States Open Championship in 1914 at Midlothian outside Chicago. The wit and wisdom of the irrepressible Hagen included the following aphorism. Anybody can win the Open once. He said that, of course, immediately after he had won his second Open. Close to your fourth. Chief. While we were away, things changed again. The man in control at the moment. Fifth hole tee shot. Jack, that's why they call this hole double trouble. You've got to hit a straight drive because, as you just saw, that creek is in play. Good look at the hole. It's uh, coming out of the, one of the many groups of oak trees and Tom's ball, as you see, just where the fairway starts there to the right is where he put it, just to the right. Now, we saw all the players a minute ago, Zaki and J. Don Blake in the left rough, put it in the water, winds around in front of the green. So water comes into play twice if i had to put it in the water i think i'd rather drive in the water first mm -hmm. now he can still make a five after his drop now scott simpson <laughs> that's a wonderful drive after watching times because usually you'll see a player make sure that they stay left. Now at the historic par three sixth hole and Curtis Strange. Jack, this hole playing 173 yards into a little breeze now. Curtis wisely taking a five iron out after seeing Larry Nelson hit first and hit a six iron and coming up short of the flag. He made a good looking swing and that ball is covering the flag. Beautiful shot there. Well, we spoke about patience yesterday and this man certainly has it. There may be a big change here. Jerry Pate, Nick Price, Doug Weaver, and Mark Weeby all had holes in one before 10.15 in the morning here the other day. Larry Nelson hit his tee shot here before Curtis. This is on tape. And coming back down a little bit. Now, Tom Kite and Bob Rosberg. Jack, I don't think that uh, Tom, after he drops this ball, has any chance of putting it on the green. Mm. Uh, he's going to have to play about a uh, oh, 40, 50 yard slice if he decides to take a shot at the green. And trying to slice it out of the rough and the wind is coming out of the right. Uh, I think Tom is a little too, animal too smart. And, uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't think you'll see him shooting at the green. I think you'll see him laying up short of the water. Well, he went in quite short in that water then, Bob. Well, he's got a shot of about 175 yards, I would say. I don't need anything.